What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the part 4 of the ultimate guide to the One Piece card game. If you haven't checked the previous parts, I highly suggest you do. The last part was actually how to find the card game in stores or online. And now that you know how to find the product in store, it's time to look at what you should buy when you find the product in store. Because when it comes to the One Piece card game, there are multiple products available for you to purchase. But not all of them are really worth your money. So let's dive into the main product that are going to be of interest. And the very first type of product that we are going to talk about are going to be the starter deck. And there are actually a ton of starter deck now that you can actually find and maybe purchase. You can pretty much find all those information on the One Piece official website. But I'm going to break them down to you so you know exactly what you're in for. First and foremost, if you see a starter deck with the super pre-release mention, this is a collector thing. If you're just looking into getting into the game to play, you don't need to purchase this. However, if you are a collector, this is going to be a super pricey product that you can potentially add to your collection. Long story short, before the release of the game, they made a super pre-release and the only thing available at that super pre-release was the first four starter deck. And it goes without saying that those four decks had a different packaging than what you can find right now. And all the cards bear the mention super pre-release on them in a gold stem. Additionally, also, all the leaders were alternate art of the regular leader for those four starter decks. But it's kind of a downgrade in my opinion. But anyway, if you find those decks and you are a collector, that's a good thing. Remember, those are not going to be printed anymore. So depending on the price, it might be worth your while. But if you're a regular player and you just want to get into the game, starter decks are what you're going to be looking for. I'm going to give a brief overview of them, just so that you know exactly what they're on about. The first starter deck was about the Straw Hat crew, as you can see right here. And, and this was your typical aggressive aggro deck really strong in the early game but kind of fall shorts in the late game starter deck 2 the worst generation was the very first product ever to have a card that can actually give you draw power which is why pretty much everybody was running that deck during the super pre-release and during the early life of the game starter deck 3 the seven worlds of the sea is based on the chishibukai and blue is actually the archetype of control so there's a lot of cards that are bold removal but in the soft kind of way they don't really KO the cards they're just bouncing it back to your hands or your deck starter deck for the animal kingdom pirate based on kaido and his crew during the wano arc is a deck that used the purple color purple which is a color that mainly use ramp as a mechanic and so a lot of the cards are done minus so you have to take Don back to your Don deck but there are ways to circumvent that in purple so if this is your style that's a very good deck to pick up starter deck 5 was kind of a budget deck actually it was based around the film type so you had Chanks, Uta, Douglas Bullet, Guilty Sorrow, those kind of things all cars coming from the movies. Starter Deck 6 finally introduced the black color to the game and this is a deck heavily based around the Marines and black as a mechanic mainly use cost reduction in order to apply additional effects so for instance you might have a card that say give minus two to the cost of one enemy cards and then one of your other cards is going to say KO a character with a cost of one or less that sort of thing that's cost manipulation starter deck 7 much like starter deck 6 introduced us to a new color which was the very last one and it was yellow and they did so with this deck who prominently featured the big mom pirate crew and the main mechanic of yellow cards is actually life manipulation so taking your own life to gain another one or maybe restart your life or maybe just go straight for your enemy's life that's that kind of thing next we had to a little smaller deck in starter deck 8 and 9 monkey d luffy and yamato which was respectively black and yellow and to close up the first year of the game we had the release of the starter deck 10 which was a ultra deck which is actually a whole subject in and of itself ultra decks are decks that are made for competitive play and those decks usually feature three leaders so you have ways to mix your game with those decks and let me tell you that starter deck 10 was just a beast of a deck even to this day one of the leader is still 
still prominent in the meta so if there is one deck you consider buying to get into the game i suggest getting your hands on any of the two ultra decks we'll be getting around to the second ultra deck in a second but next we had perhaps the most disappointing starter deck of all of them it was the starter deck 11 and this deck while being based around the character of uta actually was mostly reprints there were only five cards including the leaders that were exclusives everything else in the deck was reprinted from opo2 next we had the starter deck 12 which was the first deck to feature an hybrid leader meaning a leader that was dual character on a single leader and it was Zoro and Sanji. It was a very interesting deck and some of the cards were very useful during the meta. Starter deck 13 was the second ultra deck so this is also a good option to pick up if you can get your hands on one. Starter deck 14 is scheduled to go out in August and starter deck 15 through 20 are actually scheduled to go out at the same time in November and starter deck 15 through 20 will actually feature reprints leader from past sets but the entire deck is going to be exclusive to the starter deck so keep your high speed for those because some of the leaders that they chose were very very good in their own right newgate for instance was a meta dominant leader at some point yuta also made some wave when her starter deck was released and charlotte category is still one of the best yellow leader that we've had even though nl is now way more prominent than him it is still a very good leader and like i said previously starter decks are a good entry point to the game if you are really like a 100 percent newcomers to the game i suggest picking up either starter deck one or starter deck two if you are an aficionado of trading card game though i suggest going for one of the ultra deck either starter deck 10 or 13. Now that being said, with starter deck you're very limited to what you can do and that is why we have also booster sets and there's going to be a couple of things to note here. First off, there is actually two lines of booster sets. The first one is the one with the reference OP followed by a number and the second line is going to be the extra boosters which are named EB followed by a number. Starting from OP01, going all the way up to OP06 at the time of filming this video at the very least, and OP07 is actually scheduled for the end of this month. So if you're ever finding yourself in the position where you can buy booster boxes for the game, just know that anything more than 120 for any given booster set is a ripoff. Generally speaking, prices of booster boxes usually go around 90 to 110 so 120 is already pushing it and of course there are sets that are more interesting to pick up and for me personally i would say that this would be op01 op03 op05 and op06 and the reason is that op01 romance down was actually the foundation of the game and a lot of the cards that we still use to this day are staples that come from this very set OP03 is the set that completed all the color because we finally had a proper yellow set with the category leader that I mentioned earlier and it also introduced the Nami deck with the mill mechanic whereas if you draw all your cards from your deck you win the game. OP05 was the anniversary set for the game and spoiler alert I guess the set was actually featuring Gear 5 Luffy. While every set have a manga rare this set had so you can definitely see how that specific set was a very good set and a very seek after set. Also not to mention NL was in this set and it is one of the best leader that they've made so far. And finally OP06 is actually the current set that is released so maybe you'll be lucky to find some boosters in your local game shop. And as for the future we already know that OP09 is going to be the anniversary set and it's going to feature the four emperor and that will be the new emperors not the old ones and we also know that the treasure booster set that is just right here is actually going to be a reprint set of previous cards from various sets we don't know the list just yet but when we will know the list i will make sure to post a video about those so you would know for sure 
what cards are going to be in the set. Now I'm going to hop on to the card list real quick because starter deck and booster sets are going to be the core of the game. All those cards are going to be unique. Some cards will have alternate art. Yeah, sure. But every card is going to be unique. Alternate art is just going to be a different art of a same card. And the very last set that you actually need to pay attention to is going to be the promotional set. So if we scroll all the way down here, we have promotion cards. And those are going to be promotional cards that have been released for the game through various events. Those cards you're not going to be able to find in the regular set. You, you will need to participate in various events in order to be given those cards. They are being handed to you just for participating. They are not mandatory, but they were keeping an eye on. So those are going to be the main three products that you want to pay attention to because those are the products that will contain the cards you need to build your collection and start playing. So remember, starter deck, booster sets, promotional cards. Now, I theoretically could stop here, but there is actually more product that we need to talk about. But before that, if you've already learned something from this video, please consider liking this video and share it with your friends so you can get together and enjoy this beautiful game. I currently need all the help I can get with the channel, so any like, share, subscribe or even comments is really greatly appreciated. But let's talk about all the other products that you might have seen and you might not know what it is. And first off are going to be premium card collection. Premium card collection started off with the 25th anniversary of the One Piece, the license itself. They made a premium card collection which featured all the straw hats in their 1-0 outfit. So the cards are very beautiful, they are well designed, well thought of, and each of those cards, you cannot see on the website, but each of those cards have really cool effect on the cards, which made them very valuable and very sought after. That being said, any premium card collection that you are going to see, they are just going to be reprints. And let me show you what I mean by that. So for instance, in this premium card collection, the 25th anniversary collection, you find all the straw hats. Let's look at Zoro because for some reason he's black and the other ones are red. Well, that's actually because the card is a leader. And as you can see, okay, 5k life, done X1 during your turn, all your character gain plus a thousand, Roro Nova Zoro from the Supernova and Straw Hat crew with five life of the red color. But if you look closely at the bottom right corner, you can see OP01-001. See this leader? Roro Nova Zoro, Supernova Straw Hat crew, 5k, done X1, your turn, all your character gain plus a thousand. OP01-001. And that is going to be the critical point about premium card collection. Don't hesitate to buy premium card collection if you are a collector. If you're a regular player just looking into getting into the game, do not buy the premium card collection. Funny thing is I actually have the live action edition just right here on my desk. So if you do want to see me open this in a video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. The premium cards collection are going to be recurring over the life of the game, but we do have some other promotional products that are also regularly released and those come in the shape of the Devil Fruit collection, for instance. The Devil Fruit collection number one as featured here was actually a sort of deck, a sort of deck box in the shape of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. And in the packaging, you would have 10 sleeve for your Dawn deck, as well as one exclusive Dawn that you cannot find elsewhere other than in this product. And next you had some boosters from OP04 and OP03. And I'll say seasonal for that product because it is already announced that we are going to get a Devil Fruit Collection number two, which is going to feature the Mera Mera Nomi. Another product we've had the joy of having for the game was actually the gift collection and this was sort of a care package where you would have one deck box that you can see right here and you would have five packs of opo4 boosters as well as one promotional pack that contained three cards of 13 different types which are all the card feature right here up above but those were exclusively reprints that was actually a very interesting product if you are a collector and the last recurring type of product that we are gonna have is gonna be the anniversary set 
which for the English version is different than the Japanese one. But basically what you get is one storage box, 10 cards, which are reprints of cards that are available in other sets one playmat and one set of 100 sleeve and those are actually featured uh, right here up above so you had this kind of cool japanese uh, yokai old style design and this is what was printed on the playmat on the storage box which is actually a cardboard box as well as on the sleeve and it was the design that was used for all the cards which was cards about the straw hats of course but again those were very fine but they're all reprints at the end of the day. So this is very typically what I mean when I say this is for the collector's type of person, not for the players. So it's up to you to determine which category you belong to. Aside from those products where you get cards with what you're buying, even if they are reprints, we had a bunch of other stuff, mainly sleeve, uh, because for each set they release official sleeves. They usually go by four and usually have a variation of the One Piece classical logo back here. Let me find the other one, Officer Sleeve 5. So you see that this was for OPO 5 and 6. So you had NL and you had the OPO 6 design as well as a variation of the classical cards. And you're gonna get also a ton of products which are basically just a play mat with cardboard box for storage so feel free to purchase those if you want but i'm not a big fan of those so i'm not just i'm, I'm not really paying attention to those now there are some other products in that category that i would pay attention to but bear in mind that those products are typically just available for japan so you might not find them or at least not easily but there is a possibility to have sort of a, a little figurine to which you can like add your don and this actually serve as the leader on your board so you can see the monkey d luffy right here and it really was that idea where you would have your leader in the form of a figurine on the board that is actually super dope and super cool i totally dig that sort of things but it actually never got past japan and we never got this around here and another product that is actually kind of the same is the one piece card game sound volume and i made a video detailing what those are and what they do but what they are is actually those sort of uh cassettes where it's sort of like a snapping case so this this part right here just pops off and you can put your leaders in there and then close it back up. And what those things do is actually you can have you have some buttons here on the sides. Those allow you to customize the sounds coming out of those things. So you can basically have sound effects and music while playing the One Piece card game. Also, not to mention each one of those comes with a reprint of a very popular leader. The first volume here, which is the red one, uh, you're going to have a reprint of Monkey D. Luffy, the purple Monkey D. Luffy from OPO5. And the second one right here, which is the black one, you're going to have a reprint of NL, the yellow NL from OPO5. OPO5 as well. Those are super cool products and both those sound volume I managed to order online. So if you are interested in that, make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss when I upload that video. But for now, these are all the products that you can find for the game. And remember, if you are a new player getting into the game to play, focus on the starter deck and maybe pick the ultra deck above all else. If you need to buy booster boxes, focus on OPO 1, 3, and 5, and avoid premium card collection. They're honestly not worth your money. But if you are a collector, go for the premium cards collection. I hope you learned a ton of things during this video, and next video is actually going to be about deck building. So I'm actually going to walk you through a very simple method to start deck building your own decks, which is actually a super fun part of the game. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve, maybe check out those two videos right here.